It's the cherry Betty bubble of the dust. We will talk about the things that mean so much to you, like going to a restaurant or hanging at the zoo. Clothes and sports and funny news, crafts and travel too. Nothing ever scripted, so expect the unexpected. Hello, hello, hello. hello. It's the cherry Betty bubble of the dust. It's the cherry Betty bubble of the dust. Hi, welcome to our show. It's uh, Monday, October 29th, and episode 70. I'm Chatty Patty. And I'm Paula Walla. And I was always wondering why you look up there when you say that, because you're looking in the camera. Never mind. All right, we figured that one out. Our special guest today is Mike Conrad from Royal Oak High School. Episode 70, and you just figured that out. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Where is she looking? Well, I... I'm like, is there a calendar up there? Because she always gets a date right. (laughs) (laughs) I just got up. So Mike Conrad's Royal Oak High School teacher, um, film, video, television. What's the difference between those three things? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's a good way to spend the day. Um, <laughs> video is learning the basic uh, skills. Uh, television is doing live broadcasts, and film is analytical study. How's that? And you forgot to put musician. He plays guitar as well. He's a musician um, playing in Grooving Violation, a local dad band. We do. We How's viol- that going for you? We violate the groove on a monthly basis. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> so uh, what instrument do you play? Guitar. And that's it? That's it. And I do not <laughs> sing. What's the history of you and the guitar? And the guitar. Oh, wow. Yeah, when did you pick up the X? Um, when did I want to or when did I? <laughs> when did you? Tell what? us both. Uh, I, finally, I think I finally bought a guitar when I was about 19 years old. Oh, cool. And like I, in college? Yeah, and I bought it from a friend of mine, and I learned how to play the intros to like 12 songs. Oh, like... Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton. Like, all you know, the really uplifting songs. And then... <laughs> I let it sit for years and years, and I never really did anything with it. And then it became a vintage guitar. No, and then I sold it. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you needed the money. Yeah. Needed yeah. the money to buy so, car- comics. Oh, yeah. And then my son was born, and you know he was a great sleeper. So my wife and I sat around in the evenings all the time. So I thought I'm going to buy that guitar. I always wanted. I'm going to learn how to play. So go. that was about when I was in my early 30s. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're doing very well. Irving okay. Violation is. Violating the groove. Violating, <laughs> yeah. Violating so many grooves. We are. Yeah. Now, we're are you good at reading guitar. music? No. <laughs> I'm it's not. a struggle. It is a struggle. I never really learned it. You don't have to to play guitar. You just catch the groove oh, and right. then you violate and it. You violate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm playing with a great group of guys. Actually, Paula said, "Hey, why don't you go play uh, with these guys on Saturday night in Charlie's garage?" I was like. Um, that sounds awkward. I'm just supposed to show up this guy's house in Troy. Uh, is, is, can Charlie play? Yeah, is Charlie home? <laughs> yeah, can you come out and play today? So I show up at this guy's house on a Saturday night. Never met any of them before. And there's a drummer. There's two bass players. There's four guitar players. There's three singers. <laughs> and then all the neighbors come out and sit on the on the driveway and they listen. And we played music all night long. And they keep inviting me back. So well, now you got to get over your fear of uh, public playing. Playing, you know. Being afraid, right? You, yeah, you, absolutely. You beat your demons. So it's really fun. So we get together now as a core group of six of us. Um, we can play anything from an acoustic duo to a full-on six-piece band. And we just played uh, the Kaju Cafe last uh, Friday night. Excellent. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. Did you eat their food? Did I you did. Did, did you get oysters? Muscles? I, yeah. I muscles, didn't get the must the the, must, the musters. Mus- I, the oysters. Did you get them? I didn't get no, I got the, just the fish and chips. <laughs> I got the which muscles. Which is still fantastic. I got the mussels and the problem is they give you the like three hundred of them. It's a bucket. I know. It's meant to share. Yeah. Like with six people. Did you share? Yes. <laughs> but that's a lot of mussels. And if you took them all out, <laughs> it'd be like this many. Yeah. It's great though. I love. I love. It that is place. good. It is good. Did it's they fabulous. boost your libido? Or are they supposed to do? That? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it was gonna be that kind of a show. So. <laughs> I, I, hey, I used I used a real my grown up words. <laughs> big girl. <laughs> I'm a big girl. All right. So um, so you're a teacher at Royal Oak High School, and mm-hmm. you know we don't want to get too specific about that. We don't want to get political, but or what, get what are students kids, in trouble? What are kids like these days? Let's. How are they different from kids ten years ago? Or what's What's the change? I think kids nowadays are smarter and more mature. Than, <laughs> you liar. No, no, I don't. I don't lie. It's Do you think because of technology? Because there, there's just so much technology. Uh, I think that there's a lot put on teenagers' plates nowadays, and they have They're to grow responsible. up. responsible. Yeah, they have to grow up faster than than 
than they're supposed to. So I, I meet kids who are doing amazing things and they're 16 and 17 and 18 years old. And I think about me when I was in high school and I was not <laughs> as put together as these kids are nowadays. What were you doing yeah. at 16? Um, playing video games in my friend yeah. Derek's basement like everybody else. Like you know? Nintendo. I should have been. Yeah, was, we're playing Punch-Out. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul and yeah. I are uh, members of the Royal Oak Optimist Club, and we just had the uh, Youth Appreciation Breakfast, which is a yearly thing with kids from Shrine, Royal Oak High School, Berkeley High School. Um, each of the, uh, member of the Optimist Club interviews a, a student that is um, – uh, recommended by a counselor or a teacher and then we get to introduce them so we have to get to know them personally yeah. and then introduce them to a group of strangers and it's so rewarding these kids are so accomplished I they're amazing. can't even believe it they are it's it's a great way to spend a day uh, I get to spend my day with these teenagers teenagers who really want to do great things um, and it's rare that I, I get up in the morning and say can't do it or come home and think gosh that was a terrible day every day is a fun day well it's a, probably every day is different too totally different yeah. What's the class that's working on now? Like, do you have a big project? Yeah, well, we're in the, uh, the throes of the end of the first quarter. So um, the intro to video kids are learning all about marketing and advertising. So they're making <gasps> commercials for everything in uh, the school. Um, and if, everything from, you know, drama club to joining the basketball team to one girl's doing a public service announcement to freshmen saying, please wear your deodorant. Oh. Hey, and because of Teen Clean Closet, we know that there's free deodorant available <laughs> uh, at the school. This was not even scripted. It's not. The Optimist <laughs> Club also tries to um, help donate to Teen Clean it's Closet. because they're so optimistic. Yeah, I know. So we need to let that girl or whoever know yeah. where that closet is. Now, how is she, is she going to air it on? How, who's going to see this video? Uh, so the intro kids make a 30-second commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, the advanced kids do a live TV broadcast every single day, and when they go to a commercial break, they play the commercials from the intro audience, um, intro classes to throw to a commercial. Oh, that's yeah. cool. And it goes out on uh, WAK, the cable channel for the school district, live every day at 2.54. So if you have Comcast and WOW, you can see it there. For these commercials, is there a time limit? Do they have to be like 30 seconds long? Oh, 30 seconds exactly to the frame. Okay. Oh. And there's Sorry. 29 frames in a second, so you have to have it exactly 30 seconds to the frame. So professional. Yeah. We'd mess that up, Patty. Yeah, we would. <laughs> it stresses them out, but they realize it's not that hard. Well, that's yeah. the real world. It you is know? the real world. Yeah, you have limitations. You know, speaking of the real world, I was out doing some gardening, and I think I might have talked about this, and this photographer came by, and she said, can I take a picture of your house? We're looking for a house to shoot a commercial, and we want to make it wintertime, and it's a car commercial. And I'm like, oh, yeah, God, my daughter's a filmmaker. We, she could help. And, well, and they picked another house, but someone had seen it in Royal Oak, and they were shooting snow. It was kind of a nice day, shooting snow all over the front lawn, and they were making a car commercial. Wait, your daughter's a winter. filmmaker? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'd like to meet her. Becca. <laughs> Maybe she's watching. She better be in class. <laughs> so, anyway... That was kind of cool. I don't know, so thought. are they still um, <laughs> filming that commercial? No, it was two days of shooting snow at a house. Just a car driving in and out of the parking it lot. It was supposed to be Christmas. No, and uh -huh. like pulling up in the driveway. But they didn't shoot in the winter. No, but it's supposed to be out for Christmas, so they had to shoot it now. You should have jumped in and taken your Christmas picture with your family. <laughs> I know. Well, I was ready to put up Christmas lights if they would have picked our house. Yeah. I did that for uh, my friend made a Halloween movie at our house, and I decorated the house and had a Halloween party, and uh, it, it was so much fun. Right? I was Paula in was there. Well, your your house was in <laughs> Dial a Prayer. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's another yeah, movie. Yeah, the William H. Macy film that was shot here in town. They used your house. Yeah, they did. It was... You know, no kind of an honor, but kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> like, it, I, honestly, we had just got back from vacation, and um, I was a nervous wreck because the house was just full of people, and they, they said, um, um, can we light a cigarette? And I'm like, no, no, I don't want you to burn a cigarette in my house. And I was... You know, I was the party pooper, so I said, okay. And so they someone smoked in my bedroom, and then I had to come home, and my house smelled like cigarette for a week. And then everyone lit up, and then the whole house there, smelled. I don't know. It was stressful, I thought. Indoor, outdoor, my yeah. outside would be better. Yeah, this would have been outdoor. But anyway, I'm As sorry. stressful as the Lawn Olympics? No, the Lawn Olympics is easy, because <laughs> that's outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah, outside's better. Well, excellent. So what, after this project... What are they going to do? Oh, they're going to work on documentaries. 
Oh, do they get to pick? They what? get to pick their topics, yeah. So anything that, that has to do with um, something that their audience, which is the teenagers in school, would be interested in. Kids have done documentaries on their own ADD, um, their own OCD, uh, how they're working two and three jobs to help pay the bills at home. Um, there's a documentary a couple of years ago on turophobia, which is the fear of cheese. There's a girl who had the fear of cheese. For real? It's a real thing, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, if you need a, a subject, we know somebody. Spaghetti Man. Oh, yeah. Spaghetti Man wants a documentary. <laughs> he wants yeah. a documentary. He asked us, do you know anyone who wants to make a documentary on me? So just, Becca, you know. it's perfect. It's one in college. No, she's, she's too busy. So busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's Not seriously. Not sure Spaghetti Man fits into the high school crowd. Yeah, you're right. He is a grown at, at He could show up at a rave. He would, too. Oh, God. He'd show up at a football game. They'd be like, what is going on with this guy? It'd be fun. <laughs> could you imagine? It'd be amazing. So I heard the whole football area is different now. Yeah, we just had, uh, with the whole bond that was passed in Royal Oak, um, they built a field house with a new entranceway and ticket booths and concession stands. It's fantastic. It does sound fantastic. Yeah, it looks amazing. To- no, but Calvin DJed the uh, grand opening. My son DJed the party, the celebration. Wow. He DJ, DJs everything. And he does. Goes, like, the, the seventh grade dance, my son went there and goes, does Calvin DJ every party? <laughs> I said, probably does, yeah. Not the high school dance parties. He doesn't do the high school? No. Okay. No, I don't know why, but yeah. um, probably sooner or later he will. Who knows? Yeah. That would be intimidating. The high schoolers are a little <laughs> different. So. They have opinions. Yeah. Strong opinions. Well, especially on music. High schoolers definitely have strong opinions. Is there a big difference between high schoolers and middle schoolers? Do you... Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've I've... had one. Well, I, I, taught... I just watched the movie Eighth Grade, and we were like, oh, my gosh. Have you seen that movie? No. It's about the struggles of a young girl at the age of 15 and her single dad. And um, it, it was a lot deeper than I thought. Everyone said, go see it. I think middle Eighth school grade. was rough for my girl. Middle, middle school's, school's rough. tough for everybody. It, it's tough. And my son's at the high school now, so he's a freshman. Oh, he made it. Whew. He did, yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have lunch together? Oh, God, he doesn't even want to <laughs> be seen in the same hallway as me. Aww. Yeah. Oh. It's, I, you know, it's like, buddy, I'm not going to run up to you and give you a hug in the hallway and embarrass you. I'm going to give you a high five. I'm going to fist bump you just like everybody else. I'm going to say, hey, how's it going? Um, I now notice that for his third hour, instead of walking by my room, I noticed last week that he goes the other way to take the shorter. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's probably longer for him, but yeah. Is, can he take your class legally? Le- oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not until he's in 10th grade. The but law. Yeah. Legally, yeah. Is he going to? I I ask him on a, well, he comes to me every once in a while and says, okay, I think I'm going to take all your classes. <laughs> and then a week later he says, no. I think I already know enough already. I'm like, oh, do oh, you? Yeah. Oh, okay, you're one of those. Gotcha. I take that class at home with my dad. Yeah, on the yeah, because I sit at home and just teach video. You know, I've got nothing else right, to do. Right, yeah. Okay, sit down. <laughs> what are some accomplishments and awards that um, you've won and are some of your students, some highest honors? Uh, the students have absolutely rocked it over the last couple of years. Um, student Emmys, um, the, the production awards through the National Association of Taiwan Arts and Sciences, um, we've had great success in a competition called Courageous Persuaders, um, which is fantastic prizes where they make a PSA and it's graded on by uh, eighth graders. So they have to change their mindset and produce for a, a different audience than their own. And we've had winners in that for the last couple of years. Um, Becca nominated me for the Courageous Leader Award for that. So that was great. something that I, I received, which was fantastic. Lots of tears in the audience. That was a lot of fun. Well-deserved. Um, it just every year we we have great accomplishments, and sometimes accomplish, accomplishments don't even revolve around an award. It's about a kid who struggled but then finished a project that was fantastic, and watching that student grow through the the process is probably better than an award. Do many kids? I mean, I know of one, obviously, and well, two that have gone yeah, on both of your kids to yeah. uh, to film school, and you know how many? What's the percentage you think of kids that really dig it? Oh, they all dig it, but what do they do with it? I don't really know. It's hard to say. I mean, sometimes they go study in, at Central, and then they realize two years in they want to do marketing instead, which is still related. Right. It's just a little bit different. Um, I do have a student, Annie Colick, who's now out in L.A. She graduated from Columbia last year. She's now out in L.A. You know, trying to make it happen. Uh, Evan Gulak is graduating from, uh, I believe, this year from Columbia. Um, Calvin went to Specs and is now working, you know, across town at another cable channel. You know, Becca's at CCS. I mean, it's like watching them all grow and, and, and start to do it is is really fun. What are the, what are they going to be doing in ten years, fifteen years? I have no idea. Don't you Neither think that do they. I <laughs> yeah. never knew what I'd be doing this? You know, so who knows? Don't you think that every job you, 
no matter what career path you follow, you can benefit from knowing um, video and film or especially making, now, absolutely making some kind of video. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to do that. Well, that's how I ended up here at your urging. I have a band and um, mm-hmm. wanted Patty. I knew she worked here. I'm like, can you make me some videos? She goes. That's a ton of work. Take the class and make your own. <laughs> and I did, and they're pretty bad. You can, no, you can they're see great. I got, Canned re- band videos. I'm really into stop motion. Uh, we had fun. So, we would have. I even had a party at my house, the claymation, and the we cl- did the. We had the kids over making all kinds of. Uh, and I got Matt little to figurines. Eat, to eat oh yeah, Play-Doh. yeah. Egg, Play-Doh. Well, I remember you came into the classroom one day. <laughs> I didn't know who you were, and I think Becca was a freshman. So you you came in. You're like, I've got this camera from CMN. I'm shooting the <laughs> basketball game, and something's not working. I'm like, Hi, nice to meet you. I yeah. remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out the camera. And I thought, Wow, they just let you take this equipment. No, and, and she do was, it. She so, took a yeah. class. Oh, on I know. It. Now I know. I did yeah. take a class. So that was fantastic. <laughs> That was the second time we met. Yes. Yeah. The first time was back in my previous career in radio when I was working on Mitch Album's show. Oh. And the candy band came in and played and live. Played. I still you were have there? that. Yeah, I was I did your sound. Oh God. I know. I, I still have the C D. I was like, this is really crazy stuff. We had a blast with you guys that day. That was fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for remembering me. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> you you made a special I impression. impression. <laughs> yeah. I very memorable. love gigs that you have to haul all your gear up to the what floor? Eighth floor. <laughs> oh no, that was higher. That was the twenty second floor of the Fisher building. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's why I bought a good cart. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think the drummer felt? I know. That's why I don't play drums. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of drums, my friend Galen McKinney, do you know her? She's in Straight Ahead. No. Like oh, I, know stra- I know Straight Ahead, yeah. I went to her. Um, she hosts an open mic at Burt's on Thursdays, mm-hmm. jazz. And I'm like, all right, I'll come up and jam with you. And then at the last minute, I thought, no, nah, I'm going to check it out first. Oh, my God. Thank God I didn't bring my guitar. they good? They're so good. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. They're so good. They've been playing together for years. Well, people, no, people from the audience got up and played, and mind-blowing. Hmm. So I'm I'm going to do it. It's on my bucket list, and she's going to hold me to it. And I said, I'll do it. It's going to be sound like primitive music compared to what you cats are doing. Wow. That you should do that. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. But or no, you do just it. come up there. Just, just come up. I and should listen. probably do this, but I think you better she do it first. She has to watch you do it. Yeah, oh, no, just come up and listen. Because then she'll follow you. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> and Make she'll me look, look great. Even worse. Yeah, yeah. It's put just... Conrad up there. He sucks, and then I'll go on after him. <laughs> there were just some funny people, man. Just really good. This little old woman gets up and she just starts wailing on the sax, and I'm like. Who is this person? It was Galen's aunt. What nights did they do this? Thursdays. And they start at 8.30, so it's not, you know, you, yeah, you I can't be home do, by 10. I, I can't do a 2 a.m. night on a Thursday. No, you could be home by 10. Okay, and, and so what about ha- being on stage by yourself and everyone watching just you? Is oh, myself, something? I don't do that, no. no? I, don't, I don't sing. Um, I'm, I like being part of a group. Yeah. I think you should Ensemble. try and sing. No, I've tried. Yeah, it doesn't happen. <laughs> Let me hear you sing, yeah, like, no. happy birthday. You can't nope. force it. Oh, McDonald's. Oh, you know what? Oh, I'm good. Ha- Come on. So, happy birthday. I was trying to learn how to play happy birthday on my guitar one night, and I don't have a good ear to, to, to pull out. The, if you sing a note, I can't find a note really well on the guitar. So, my wife was singing happy birthday, and I was trying to hit the note, and I kept hitting the note around. She's going, happy Ham! He's like yelling the note like, at me, and I'm like, I can't get it. I'm so sorry. Yeah. All right, Paula, so. I have a question. Yes. So the song when you're singing the ABC song, yeah, is are the A, B, and C notes? No. Okay. Oh my God. That would oh, be, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? A B C or A B C D E. A B C. Oh God! I thought that. My that God. Would... Thank God, there's not an H note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what though? I had a student once, a guitar student that she lived in Germany for a while, and so she had the book that I teach out of, but in German. So we used it for a while, and there was an H chord. I'm like, what is up with? It was it... some weird German thing. <laughs> I'd never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> Those Germans. It was the most bizarre thing. So I was, yeah, teaching. Is that why in India they have the sitar? Is that the one with all those strings? Because they have more letters in the alphabet? I don't know. It's George Harrison. George Harrison loved the sitar. Sort of Robbie. That is how many strings does that have? Does anybody know? know? Like Like a lot, right? Ten or something. Okay. Ravi Shankar was the guy. You know who Ravi Shankar's daughter is? Yes, Nora Jones. Isn't that crazy? Oh. 
Yeah. Do you know who? Okay. Do you watch Walking Dead? No. Uh, Rick Grimes, the main character, whose last episode is next week. His he is married to Jethro Tull, Ian Anderson's daughter. <laughs> or something. His cousin's wife. Yeah. <laughs> Nephew's brothers who knew this guy who walked his dog after school. Dog babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> it's a small world, though, you know. That's interesting. I was I watched Walking Dead, and next week is Rick Grimes' last episode. He's been on since the beginning, so. So, Mike, where'd you go to college? Where did you study film and video? I studied radio and television broadcasting at Wayne State. Tartars. Tartars. Yeah, we were the Tartars <laughs> at the time. Um, and I spent two years there and needed to take a break. So then I went to Specs Howard and I did the program there. Once I completed their program, I went back and finished my degree. And then I jumped in the world of radio. And how did yeah. how was that for you? <laughs> how was radio? <laughs> uh, it was fun. I loved it. I, I grew up want, always wanting to do there radio. There weren't that many jobs in radio. I started out in radio and there's yeah. just it's less hard. opportunity. You got to just... You have to be willing to do the crappy jobs. So Far that, away. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I stayed in Detroit. I was pretty lucky. My whole career was in Detroit and in, in, in Ann Arbor. Um, but when I was you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, I loved the radio. Like, mm -hmm. It was uh, Ernie Harwell. I listened to the Tiger games. When Mojo said he was flying over our houses, I was looking out the window to see if a spaceship was flying really? over. Really? Oh, yeah. I loved it. I drilled a hole in through my basement, the, the floorboards in my parents' room, Aww. and wired into their phone to extend a phone into my room so I could call <laughs> DJs all night long and talk to them on the oh radio. My God. Yeah, I was I was hooked. Very, very early. Did you so, ever call the party line? No. <laughs> so that was that's what I was doing when you were a kid. You you always knew what you wanted to do. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, I that's, loved it. That's good. So and I, and I was lucky. I got to do it. I was in radio for nineteen years. And oh, that's a long um, career. Would you want to go back? Would you give up all this high school stuff? To no, go? I I love doing it's what I do love. Right now. You love radio. I still listen to the radio. I think I, I might yeah. be the only person. Yeah, no, I'm I always do. popping I radio stations. I love the radio. And, yeah. well, I listen to Dave and Chuck the Freak in the morning. I love Dave and Chuck favorite. the Freak. They're pretty fantastic. <laughs> yeah, they're so yeah. funny. I can't listen to them that much in the morning on the way to school yeah. because my son's in the car. I know. I listen to all kinds of stuff on the radio and some days I'm in the mood for gospel music and some days I, there's 102.3. It's some kind of a Middle Eastern. It is awesome music. Hmm. The best station in the morning is 105.1 The Bounce. Oh, because they're playing old school Tupac and Biggie. One hundred and five one. Yeah, I flick yeah. around there. I mean, yeah, at, at like seven thirty in the morning, driving down Crooks and hearing Biggie is a pretty great way to start. I the used day. to love um, W A H S Avondale High School. Yeah, oh, yeah. I catch yeah. that one too. Not lately, but I yeah, I used to try to catch that all the time. There was a new station, um, and it went away, and it was a station that played all like the Motown hits. Ninety nine point nine. Well, it's gone now. Yeah, it went away. It's a Christian station now. But well, they he, were playing everything Motown. Yeah, and it, was it was outstanding. Great. But yeah. here's the thing. I'd be listening to it, and as soon as I crossed 8 Mile down into Detroit, I would lose the signal. Yeah. You would lose it in Detroit, but get it in the suburbs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh, I thought it was just my car. No, no, I okay. love that station. I was so yeah. excited when it popped up. I listened to it all the time. Oh. There's another, um, I don't know what station it is, but on Saturday nights, um, like around midnight, if I'm driving home from somewhere... They'll be um, listening to like party, party, um, party music, and you can the DJs on the dance floor with the microphone interviewing people. Oh, that's gotta be! Oh outrageous. my god, it's so funny. <laughs> she like huffing and puffing. Like, oh <laughs> yeah, and like people are dancing, and he's like, "So hey, girl, what are you doing tonight?" You know, and, and he's it, probably just at home in his kitchen with some friends <laughs> and telling I you wanna, he's at a club. Jingling I want to go around. to that pub because I want you know I want to be like interviewed at midnight. <laughs> On the I, dance floor. We need to find that. That interview would mostly be like, whoa. <laughs> Let's get bananas. him on the show. <laughs> you just yell bananas at him. <laughs> we'll get him on the show. I'd be so excited. Wow. Yeah. I, we were talking earlier about high school and music. And Are there any high school bands anymore? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they Did start. You know? they, they, yeah, they, we had some. When I first started teaching about nine years ago, we had a couple bands at the high school that were really, really good. And then it just seemed that everybody just wanted to rap along with a track. Yeah, and, Dang, but rap now kind of ruined that. Yeah, but now there's a couple of bands and there's this group of kids at the school right now who brought in their music. They just recorded a couple of weeks ago and we sat down and listened to it. And I, I'm telling you, it was amazing. It sounds like a mix between Fountains of Wayne and the Replacements. It's so wow. good. That's and good to fun. hear. Yeah, and they wrote everything. They're recording it. They're mixing it. They're looking to have an album release party in like a week or two. Um, <gasps> I love so it. there are kids who are still who are still doing it. Not as many as you would hope, but it's there. Even back yeah. when I was in high school, there weren't a lot, but I don't know. Some high schools had a lot. Mine didn't. Hey, we used to, at the YWCA, we used to host uh, 
rock battles, remember? Remember we used to have rock bands? Paula used to organize that. Yep. That was um that was a lot of they were a lot of trouble and we had to have like security. And, <laughs> and stuff. one of my one of my <laughs> one of my favorite stories from that is this band played <clears throat> And we were using their drum kit, and we went on after them, the candy band. <laughs> and the drummer before us, he just wore his underwear and not pants. What? And he sweated, and Tammy oh, didn't no. want to sit on his <laughs> on drum his seat. She's like, oh, I think she like was going to grab some paper towel. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't need to bring that up. That's a funny story. Funny. Thanks but for yeah, sharing. But those were fun. <laughs> but I mean, it's an amazing I story. Teenagers. <laughs> Team Teen Closet would provide new underwear. <laughs> And some soap. <laughs> Clean that up. <laughs> but I remember G- our our director at the time was very worried, and she had hired like some husbands to be security at that gig. Remember that? Yeah, I know that I was, was like, very, a bunch of old that's grandpas. Happen. A bunch of grandpas. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great time. <laughs> oh yeah, we had a good time at the YW. Well, the after party yeah. at my house was better. Oh yeah, that was always the best part. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so. You have, how many kids do you have? One and a half. We know this. Yeah. We're just doing this for the viewing audience. Yeah. And what does he want to be when he grows up? A, gonna... a stand-up comedian. Really? Right yeah. on. Yeah, so he's been, he's addicted to John Mulaney, um, Pete Davidson from SNL. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's been watching all of the uh, Stefan skits <laughs> from Saturday Night Live. I mean, he's, he, and he, he, oh, he, mim- yeah, he mimics the delivery. And he started, like, last night at dinner, he was just rolling joke and joke and joke, and everyone at dinner was cracking up. I said, dude, are you just, like, trying out your material? He's like, yeah. That's so he's great. Really, good. Yeah, he's really funny. Yeah. Are there any outlets that you could, like, get him involved with? Yeah, we took him to uh, Go Comedy in Ferndale over the summer. He did a week-long improv course. Oh, cool. And he had a really good time with that, so we'd like to sign him up for that again. Um, we also really want to let him know that, you know, that could also be a good, like, weekend job. Right. Oh, come on. He's <laughs> but, still young. But, oh, yeah. No, he's like, plenty of time. He's 14 to work years on old, it. so he's having a really good time with that. But he's, you know, phenomenal at technology, too. So he could really do whatever he wants. Hey, yeah. well, uh, Mark Ridley, I don't know if you know this, but he saved comedy back in the 80s or 70s or 80s because he was really, um, um, he had a big part in starting a circuit because a lot of comedians were on the East Coast and the West Coast, and mm-hmm. he started traveling circuit, circuit for comedians through the Midwest. So. You know, there's that Mark Ridley's. Don't yeah. forget. I know there's there's opportunity. So we'll see. Wow. Yeah, that's great. But yeah. like Calvin, your son, he did theater, but he was always got the funny roles. He was very funny. He was funny. Yeah. I remember watching him. He was a, a linen salesperson or whatever, and he had to fold something on stage, and it never got folded. But he was a really good <laughs> fake folder. And well, I knew was, at uh, the end of the scene, he wadded it up and passed it along to someone who folded it. He had leading it. guys and dolls at the high school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was yeah, fun. That was fantastic. Oh, and Grease is coming up. Do you have any role in uh, Royal Oak High School's uh, Usually Grease? I do. I do a little bit behind the scenes. Um, there is the scene in Grease where they are um, – at the drive-in, you're stranded at the drive-in, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> and like, we have uh, one of my students is creating the movie that will be playing on the drive-in screen. Can you oh, have the dancing cool. hot dog? Yeah, it's at the, let's go out to the lobby. <laughs> so, How uh, fun. The whole, yeah, so is it not only all student produced, but even the behind the scenes, like the movie part is student produced too. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. Do the kids ever film the plays? Yeah, we do for WOK, the cable channel. Um, they do film it at times. Um, but almost all of it is completely student run. I used to sit back there and run the sound, but now we've trained enough students that that we can fully say it's a 100% student production. Well, that's exciting, Mike it Conrad exciting. from Royal Oak High School. We're running out of time. Already? So yeah, we're gonna have to say goodbye. Can I can I pit my show? Yeah, you can. Uh, November 17th at the New Way. Yeah. Groove and Violation playing 10 o'clock all night long. All right. Prepare to be violated. We will violate the groove <laughs> for hours on end. Now, is there other bands or just you guys? It's just us. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you guys are. Wow. Thanks for watching We're another kind of episode of the Chatty Patty. <laughs> Paula Walla Talk Talk, Talk Show. Show. Hello, hello, hello. It's the Chatty Patty Paula Walla Talk Talk Show. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. hello. Hi. We will talk about the things that mean so much to you Like going to a restaurant or hanging at the zoo Clothes and sports and funny news, crafts and travel too Nothing ever scripted, so expect the unexpected Hello, hello, hello It's the Jenny Patty Paula Walla Talk Talk Show It's the Jenny Patty Paula Walla Talk Talk Show Hello, hello, hello It's the Jenny Patty Paula Walla Talk Talk Show